Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 442. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 440 to 451. Hey, in this trick right here, we want to talk about summarizing monthly data. We have dates and sales. The easy way to do this is with a pivot table. However, some people want to do it with formulas. Pivot tables don't up date immediately and sometimes they don't just don't want a pivot table. Sum if and count if we're going to run into some problem um, and we'll see a sum product uh, solution also. Now I got to show you a pivot table just to hopefully convince some of you. You go up uh, one uh, cell selected, you go up to insert, pivot table, pivot table. I'm going to say in a new sheet, click OK. All you got to do is drag the date over to here or down to the row labels and then you right click group pretty easy a lot easier months and years and then I'm gonna click OK that is just profound how quickly you can do that and then all you do is you drop the sales down into the values down here or if you're in earlier versions you drop it to there <laughs> what's easier than that okay some people don't like to do that now there's a problem with the sum if and count if these functions don't accept arrays so you can't if you don't have the actual name of the month or something like that and you need to construct from individual transactional dates a group of uh, um, transactions added together sum if is just not going to do it unless you add an extra column which is what a lot of people do now this data set has two different years and I created that intentionally because as you can see with the pivot table it does it it separates all the January so there's some January's in 2010 and January's in 2011 ah but uh, for sum if we're gonna have to do it now I'll show you two different ways and I'll show you count if and sum if we're gonna use the month month function it'll just give us the month so it'll deliver us 10 here right that is number formatting. I'm going to control one and apply general. Notice don't get tricked by formatting. All right, the month 10. Now we need a month and a year. There's lots of ways you could do this. You could just do a year. Some people like to see an individual character, so I'm going to ampersand, which is the join symbol, double quotes, dash, and um, double quotes, ampersand. So I've joined a month, a dash, and now I'm going to use the year function. All right, so now we have this. We double click and send it down. Now we can come over here to our sum if area. I can scroll up over here and see. Okay, so now we'll start with our sum if equals sum if. And the way the sum if works, it's a, it's got a range, and then in that range you got to say what criteria in that range, and then the sum range. The range is going to be our extra column. I click on the top, Control Shift down arrow, and then F4 to lock it, comma and we have to create our criteria from that date right there so I'll just do month I got a moth there <laughs> uh, month and I'm gonna say of that one relative cell reference ampersand double quotes dash um, double quotes ampersand and then we'll do our year function okay so that's our criteria notice um, we have a single cell right here, um, so this doesn't create an array. Some people try to create uh, an array here, never going to work. So we did this, constructed our criteria from here, and used our extra criteria column. Now I just sum range, that is going to be our sales. I click on the top cell, control shift down on F4. Now I close parentheses, control enter double click and send it down. And it looks like we got the same values as we did in our pivot table over there. Alright, now what about our um, count if? I'm going to hide this column. Hide. Our count if, but I'm going to show you another way to do this. Sometimes people like to use the text function. You can do uh, uh, we have to use custom number format. So I click on that cell right there and double quotes we have to know the custom number format for month and year which is what we want so uh, we'll do M Y close parentheses con uh, 
close parentheses, control enter. So now I got a 10, 11. Notice I didn't push the dash there. Some people like to see it explicitly here. You don't need it, it's extra stuff to type in. Double click and send it down. Now we can come over here, count if. So I'll say equals count if. And what do I want to count? The range and the criteria. So I click there, control shift down, and I'll F4. Comma, and now we need to get our criteria. We need to make it with our text function. So I click there, and please tell me what the in double quotes custom number format for month year. In double quote, close parentheses, control enter. Oops, I forgot a close parentheses. You know, I never accept these because, especially when you start doing bigger formulas, it doesn't guess right a lot. I'm going to click no and then OK because I want to edit it, and then I'm going to go and fix it myself. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So those are uh, two ways to get around having to use arrays. Now, if you want to use some product, <coughs> I'm going to uh, hide. The advantage to some products is you don't have to add these extra columns, uh, and uh, we could build it just in one formula. I'm going to say equals sum product. And wow, we're going to have to construct a whole uh, range from these dates. Given a single date, we actually need two criteria. The easy way to do this would be to put have a column with your begin of the month and a column for your end of the month. However, sometimes you can't have those two columns. And so we need an array that says, hey, look at this date. Um, look through all of this column, greater than or equal to that date. And we need to, in our formula, construct the end of the month from this date and say, hey, that date, look through all of the here and all of these dates that are less than or equal to. Uh, and when those two criteria are met, it will add this column, all right? So our first array is going to be our date column. But we're going to get trues and falses, so we need to convert them to ones and zeros. So I'm going to do it with a double negative, open parentheses, click on that date column, Control Shift Down, L, F4, and I'm going to highlight this because we're going to use that again. Copy. All right, and what do I have to say here? Greater than or equal to that. So greater than or equal to that. That's one criteria. Now there's the first array. And now I'm going to type a comma and get to the second array, Control V. Now that's just the dates with a double negative, but watch this. Now we have to say less than or equal to. Uh, then what? We're, we don't have the end date. Well, we can construct it. If you have 2007 or 2010 or the data analysis, you could use end of month zero. I'm just going to use the version that works, the formula will work in all versions. I need a year. So I'm going to say year of that, comma, and I'm going to scoot this over here so we can see a little bit, a little bit more here. So and then the month. Now think about this. This is the first month, and we want. Um, actually, that'll be just fine. Um, except for we need to add one. We need to go. Hey, uh, please give us. In this case, it would be one. So it'll jump to the two, comma. And then we can just put a 1 here. Now, uh, some, some of you are looking and saying, hey, that doesn't make sense right there. Because then the, op the comparative operator can't be less than or equal to. It has to be just less than. I'm going to uh, get rid of that right there. I'm going to close parentheses on the date. We can highlight this and hit the F9 key and verify. Oh, <laughs> But it gives us a serial number, so that's not going to work. At least visually, it won't uh, help us. Control Z. That formula will work. That is the uh, second array. And we have to put a close parentheses. Now we have our double negatives giving us ones and zeros. Ones and zeros times this uh, will give us only a one. A one will give us a true. And those two ones will be multiplied by what? Our sales column. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to copy this right here because actually what I did was I gave you the uh, sum. This does uh, uh, the sum of all the sales. What we really wanted for this, because this is the count column, was this one right here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Control Enter, double click, and send it down.
Now I can uh, put my cursor here, Control-V, and that one is the sales. Control-Enter, double-click and send it down. It looks like we got the exact same uh, answers there. If I unhide, all right, so we saw three things here. We saw how fast a pivot table was. Uh, we saw how to deal with the fact that some if can't deal with arrays, add some extra columns. And we saw that the sum product, if you don't have two dates to compare it, you can actually construct an end of the month date right in your formula. All right, we'll see you next trick.